Hey, today is the anniversary of 9-11. Oh, and, well, well, obviously, for sure, two towers came down. And, um, that's pretty much all we really know because nobody really knows who or what uh, really caused it. According to history, how it goes down is some Saudi, mostly Saudis. Uh, let's see, what was I doing? Now, you know, um, whether you realize it was inside job or there was something funny about it or it was pr provoked to go to war, um, or it was real, or not real, or it was an inside job. The sad thing is, is after all these years, there's still people trying to figure out what really happened and prove what really happened. There's all the propaganda. It's like a JFK thing, you know. Um, You know, I know def it seems like it was uh, rigged, something, you know, I believe it was rigged, something was planned, it was planned, um, they were playing with their numbers, um, they like to uh, put that uh, occult numbers, they love to play with their numbers, so, you know, I don't like to have to, you know, um, go there but you know the masons did this this is my opinion and of course you know I have to wear a tinfoil hat you know because um, I'm a dummy or I'm ignorant or um, you know I, I believe in uh, conspiracy now to tell now if there is conspiracies going on right and the average person is saying, ah, you're just a conspiracy nut. There is no conspiracies, right? And they just dismiss the idea of conspiracies altogether. That's the whole problem. That's how come they keep getting away with it. But whether they flew those planes in, whether the foot... I mean, there's faked footage, too. So we don't know if they just added footage make it more dramatic or what but there's fake footage of it flying in but I remember even even if it was faked or not I remember I was sitting in an apartment and uh, incidentally I was coming down off of some drugs I've been up for days and I was coming down off some drugs and I turned on the TV and I think it was one tower was already smoking and I didn't know what was happening and what I saw the towers I didn't realize in my mind it didn't register those two towers didn't register although I had seen them in numerous movies and TV shows and news over and over so my subconscious registered it but for some reason I wanted to edit it out because seeing them smoking like that I was thinking this was some kind of foreign country, maybe Brazil, maybe somewhere, you know, one of these countries far away, because this doesn't happen, happen here. So, uh, immediately I, I just dismissed it as being here. But as n the news, I list, paid attention to the news, I realized, oh, this is happening here. No way. What the hell? And as soon as I'm sitting there <coughs> paying attention... There goes that other airplane, right in, <clears throat> live, you know, whether it was a computer animation or not. Ooh, boom, you know, and hit the building. Um, I was there. I, I watched it. I watched that part live. And I watched it from there to ground zero. Um, hmm.
you know, I worked at a place called, I worked at a place called Ground Zero, okay, before 9-11. Um, uh, yeah, before, right before 9-11, I worked in a place called Ground Zero, and uh, anyway, it was in San Francisco, they helped uh, at-risk youths. And stuff like that. They had like different multiple bi businesses. And stuff like that. And they're helping kids that were at risk of being in gangs. Or um, drug addicts. Or being homeless. Or being victims of crime or abuse. Such of this nature. Um, then they had multiple different types of businesses. Businesses to give these kids like a, a, a chance to learn. You know, a job skill, what it's like to have a job, you know, give them a chance in life. It was a good program. But uh, anyway, so this 9-11, um, you know, people are going to believe what they want to believe. But according to history, it was the Saudis flew an airplane into some buildings. Um, but the only flight out was... Uh, that once they stopped all flights uh, was um, you know incidentally you know the number one target the next day or you know the next month or that year was Bin Laden. Why is it your number one target is family is the only people that could fly out of the country and the rest the rest of the country was shut down. Now, if you have a shutdown on the country, okay, now that sounds like almost like a, kind of like it was almost like a martial law for a second when that happened, because they, no flights in and out, that's borderline martial law. Basically, I wouldn't mind seeing no flights in and out now. I mean, uh, unless, you know, we could fly out, no flights in, how's that sound? Flights in from home, citizens only. Uh, we need we need to be a Chinese democracy type. We need to be not communist, but we need to focus on here. That's why I'm saying. <laughs> but it's not going to happen. If you believe in scripture, it's not going to happen. It isn't going to happen. And don't stand around waiting for rapture. Because you're wasting your time. Okay. There's not going to be real peace and prosperity until the kingdom comes. So until that time, you have to be tricked and fooled every time thinking, We can do this. We can do this. We can do this. I don't know where to go with the battle of the struggle with, with it. Other than just follow Yahweh, follow the ten golden rules, meet him at his seven parties he's invited you to, and worry about that. Focus on that kind of stuff. Um, maybe I should practice what I preach, but, you know, this world, we're not supposed to be part of it. And there's a reason why. It's not that we shouldn't be aware of what's going on in the world, because we should be looking at the things for the signs to see what, what time it is. Um, you know, but, um, it's getting a little bit late in the game, you know, trying to share, I want to share nicely for the people, okay, that your Bible, your holy Bibles, okay, the intent, the integrity of the true God that sent forth these words and messages is real, and has a real message, but the Holy Bible version is horribly inaccurate. And it, it, if you would just not be insulted, be a little bit like a Vulcan, please separate your emotion from your logical thinking and investigate how your Bible was written, how it got translated, and you'll even just the history of the people that tried to translate it before 
and from the Vulgate and the Texas Receptus and all these other areas. There is so much mistranslation and errors and variations uh, of the translations. Uh, you know, when you when you translate it from Hebrew down, all the way down the line to then into the English and the King James and you know even Old English and all that stuff, you're getting garbage. That sounds mean, I know, but you really are. Um, there is so much. Now, if you could just put it side by side, you know, what it says, you know, the basics of what it says in Hebrew, in the Hebrew original, the original before it was add-ins, you know, before they started messing with it, if you could just translate that directly, more directly, put it side by side with what your Bible says, you're getting lied to. It's, it, it, it is a satanic trap, okay? And you're getting offended by saying, oh no, he didn't say that about my Bible. Yes, I did. But I'm not the Satan here. Because I point out the facts and the truth, do not be afraid to investigate. Prove me wrong. Investigate me. Prove me wrong. Investigate me. Prove me wrong. I want to be your friend. Look, this is not going to last much longer. Okay? This is not going to last much longer. The call only goes out. Many are called. Few are chosen. Okay? Few are chosen. Few are chosen. Okay? Understand? Do you understand? Okay? Listen. It's almost kind of like sad because you know a lot of you people oh god loves the whole world you know you're reading it from your your your, your christian um holy bible version it's bullshit and uh, even god says he doesn't love everybody he doesn't god does not a god loved everybody and wanted everyone and they were so special to him he would make sure that they had a place in eternity with him but not everybody's included into eternity and he says he hates therefore we should hate now you have a problem with that because if you're see your message is contradictory christian okay you have an unchanging God that's capable of hate. Some people look at him as if he's that, you know, that typical Nazi scene in the, in a Holocaust movie where, or a hollow hoax, I don't know. Ho hollow hoax, holocaust, hollow way, Hollywood. <laughs> uh, anyway, you know, and he's telling them, go to the left or the right, and the Jews are lining up and... Whichever direction he points is the way, one way is to, uh, you know, to the death because they look unsuitable and one's to, to life. So many are called, few are chosen. Some look at it that way, <laughs> you know. Um, the diseased ridden, sickly ones won't survive and they don't look like they can do any work. They got to go to the death. And the Jews that are fit to work and ready to work, they go to life, okay? Or they hope to. Maybe they hope to die. Anyway, um, you know, these kind of typical things is like the way people can look at Yahweh because they can look at him as hateful like that because... Listen, in a way, I'm, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying this is how a, a lot of other people can look at him. Okay? Because he is not here to save everybody. He ain't. He's not interested. You think he wants to spend eternity with some of these people that are very foul 
and ha have nothing, want nothing to do with him, and wouldn't for a million years, they'd rather die. Okay, there is people like that. They don't want Yahweh. He does not want those that don't want him. Get that through your head, people. You got to realize that. This rigged reality, you guys will never believe it. A lot of you won't believe it. But, you know, I've shown the 9-11. I've, I've broken it down in X-Force, an X-Force comic book, you know, where there there's a battle in the Twin Towers in an X-Force 1991 comic book, which is a 10 years before, okay? And there's all kind of symbology. Now, I'm not sure if artists realize that they have an ability to see, see into the future or not. You know, to a certain degree, I believe that, being an artist, okay? But it's just very suspicious that they set up all this stuff. There's too much symbology. There's too much... It seems to uh, it seems like it's too much of uh, too much evidence there for you know some trying to show off that they were planning this the whole time ever since they started the 9/11 you know n emergency number it was exactly what their what was 33 years was it Exactly 33 years and the tower went down. 33, the occult of 33. So, you know, they love 33. They love fitting that into the, the, the uh, you know, gematria or the number, numerology thing. Um, you know, so they do everything in 33s. Um, it's exactly one third because the third of the angels that fell. Um, anyway, so, you know, I've been, now, a lot of people don't realize there's other World Trade Centers. There wasn't, not just, those Twin Towers were not the only ones. A lot of people think that was the only wor World Trade Center in the whole world, you know, and, and, and there's World Trade Centers, other towers uh, in the United States in different places. One of them is uh in new orleans that i was being very vigilant walking around when i was uh homeless down there <laughs> uh you know living in the french quarter it's right outside the french quarter sometimes i got tired of the french quarter i'd just go over down by the casino along the river and get away from the french quarter area a little bit and see the casino because some, you know, the French Quarter is historical. So, once in a while, you want to get away from that 17th century, you know, 16th century type um, backgrounds, you know. And so, you know, it's just one skip over, and you're right there. There's a World Trade Center right there on the Mississippi River, right next to the French Quarter. Okay, anyone's been there knows. Now, this World Trade Center. Eh, it's funny because the Illuminati, the elite people, either you have to have like invitation or you got to pay big bucks to get into this club. They have a club at the very top of this World Trade Center here in New Orleans. One of the most mystical, satanic, spiritual, powerful. Um, there's a warp hole. Of, there's, uh, there's a massive uh, satanic. Uh, overflow spirit energy there if you, you've never been there and you're not sensitive to spirits and stuff then you won't know and you're enjoying the time and you're with the spirits then you won't know because you're under the influence of the spirit so you you just you don't recognize it because you're with it but when you're not with it you can recognize it and you feel that pushing down on you um, but now that place Anyway, back to that World Trade Center. There's a club at the top. And it spins. It actually turns. It's red at the top. I believe it glows red. Yeah. It glows red at night. And it spins, okay? And all the elite and all the elect 
people, not God's elect, sorry, the elite, I should say, God's elite and, and God, God's elite, yeah, the God of this earth, uh, Satan, the elite in uh, New World Order and the globalist and uh, Bohemian Grovians and the Masons and, you know, all the sacred, satanic society, they all go up there and they get drunk. It's a bar, club and bar, okay? The very top of this World Trade Center, okay? Now, guess what the name of the, the club is? It goes in a circle. I mean, the whole club at the top turns. So, every time they're, when they're drinking up there and partying, they're in this turning. It's turning. And it's always revolving. The name of the club is 360. Okay? Club 360. No, straight up. It's called Club 360. And it turns. Day and night, it turns. Okay? Red Club 360. Anyone that, if you don't realize what 360 significance is, there's 36, you know, the devil's numbers. They're plain in plain sight, as they are told to do. And, uh, you know, with the Anton LaVey, you know, the Satanic Bible and all the stuff they try to follow. Things they love to put things in plain sight, ha hide in plain sight. And the club. Club 360. So for the regular tourist, if they came by, oh, the Club 360, that means it just goes in a circle, right? And they have no idea about Masonic anything or f uh, hidden symbology. They pay $600, $700 to go in there, you know, or something like that. Well, anyway, it's supposed to be a very secure place. This is the honest truth, okay? I used to walk by that place. I've been... There's like these seven foot freaking guys that come out in suits. If you start looking uh, suspicious, uh, try to test their security a little bit, you know, around that trade center. And uh, these guys come out, these men in black, and they have these freaking sunglasses, and they're like seven foot tall, okay? No, I know I'm, I'm shorter, you know, I'm about five foot seven, so I'm not like even six foot yet. But still, I know they're, I know what tall is, okay? I have an uncle that's like six foot four or something like that, right? Anyway, so these guys were big. He was a big guy, okay? And they come out with their suit and their little earpiece, just like on the movie Avengers, you know, the men in black, you know, with the sunglasses and everything. And he comes out and he said, and he just, he doesn't look at me directly, but as casually as he walks past me, he kind of bumps me and he says, and he says, Big Brother's watching you. You know, and I'm like, what the hell? You guys come out of nowhere. He doesn't look at me, but he, he whispers, just where I could hear it only. It wasn't no schizophrenia. Believe me. Okay. Believe me. This, this happened. Okay. And this is after the world, uh, the 9-11 uh, attack. I was in New Orleans. This is right before Hurricane Katrina. I was getting these feelings and impressions that uh, there was something bad was going to happen there. And I was trying to tell people. And I was worried, you know. I even slept in, uh, I think it's the, the Hara, the Sahara, whatever. Whatever it was, the, there's a casino there, and there's a parking garage. I slept under the freaking stairway, okay, of the parking garage there. And I, I stayed there for a long time in a parking garage stairway. Okay, very dangerous, you know. Anyone can walk up on you and kill you. I had a notebook there, okay. I had my Bible, notebooks. I was keeping notes, and I was writing notes about what happened to me, testing the security. Um... I had, if I would have had a camera, I could have been rich because, you know, Homeland Security and all that stuff is getting to be a big deal. Well, one time I was walking past the World Trade Center there in New Orleans and looking at, uh, looking through the glass doorway 
and at the very front of course there's a there's a desk with security you know you can't just walk in and the security guard's sitting there and guess what he's doing it's about two o'clock in the morning guess what he's doing face down on the table sleep I went up to I went up okay to the window make sure he wasn't just slumped down dead because I was being the vigilant okay in my mind I went out when I was being homeless I was a vigilant I did vigilante shit I did it all the time so you know I wasn't playing hero I actually did some some did help a lot of different people in situations that they just arised you know and I was at the right time um and uh, the, even the police allowed me to, you know, walk away because with with someone else's blood from my knuckles to my elbows, okay? But that's another story. But anyway, so this security guard, and then I looked, he's breathing, okay? I could even hear him snoring through the glass door because the front at this time is locked, completely locked up. You can't just walk in the front at any time okay even though the clubs open at the top all day long you know uh, you know it it's just you know they, they could open the door if you're invited in but it's locked especially at that time of night okay and then there's tours and stuff of the building during the daytime and it's more it's open you could walk in but the point is if I would have had a camera, I could have took a picture of that guy. He was an African-American black guy. But he was asleep at the desk. Oh, this is after 9-11, okay? And this, you know, being on alert was a big deal still for people, okay? And him being asleep, nodded out in the desk at the bottom of the World Trade Center. I could have made money off that picture, so much money, but I didn't have a, a camera. So I wrote all these notes and stuff I was keeping on the, on the security around that building in a notebook with my Bible and my stuff where I had permission by the security guard or shouldn't have but gave me permission as long as I did not defecate. You know, basically, if piss and shit in that space didn't make huge messes, cleaned up after my mess, and kept my stuff out of the way, folded up my blanket and all my stuff, you know, right in, I could leave it there, and I could live, I could basically live there, you know, as long as I didn't cause any trouble and leave a mess. So I had permission. She even, like, brought me, like, cough medicine one time. I was sick. She said, what's wrong? She brought me cough medicine, some NyQuil. And, uh, anyway, um, so I had this notebook, okay? Now, all, all my little stupid little homeless stuff to live with, okay? Or, or whatever, you know, um, that notebook disappeared. I was keeping tabs on the security, writing notes, writing things about that ta uh, tr trade center that, you know, uh, that club 360 and I was writing symbology stuff and I was and I was writing my thoughts on what was happening there in the security there and uh, and what I was doing um, just daily walking around there because Big Brother had other different things a uh, couple times one time they um, rode past me in this Hummer no, no, it wasn't a Hummer. It was a, uh, it wasn't a Hummer. It was a, they, they rode past me in a Hummer too. Um, cause they can't stop you from just walking around the World Trade Center, you know, being vigilant, right? You know, watching because they have these foreign people, you know, having lunch at these places where like right next door where there's restaurants and food and they're all sitting gathered and they're foreigners talking all their business and they're all different types and they're right next to this center so I just walk around and and I'm um, doing vigilant stuff right and uh, so anyway I could have made a million bucks probably you know off that picture 
of that guy's sleep, but uh, that didn't make me feel very happy about security, so I continued to do my own monitor duty there. And so it's kind of like being like a homeless wannabe type of Batman, you know, uh, style, my own style of paying attention what was going on, watching what was going on there, especially after that. So I wrote all this stuff down and notes down about the security and the incidents with the, um, you know, the men in black that bumped me and that. Okay, so the limousine, it was a limousine that drove by me once and right in front of the world, that the trade center, okay? I drove by me and, you know, this is when they were doing things to intimidate me. And they rolled down, the back window rolled down just enough and something came out. They stuck something out of it and I thought, oh shit, someone's going to try to shoot something at me. And then I heard a pop. <coughs> something hit me. Bam! Right in the chest. I was like, what the hell is that? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I was hit. By something, okay? And it said, bam! Hit me in the chest. And then, uh, this is after my note. Okay, that notebook disappeared. Okay? None of my other stuff was messed with. But that notebook. I had all my documents and files and and stuff I was keeping. It disappeared, okay? Now, but what hit me was I looked down. It, something bounced off me. I realized, okay, what the hell? I looked down. There was a cork from a freaking, uh, from a freaking, uh, champagne, okay? Champagne cork that hit me, poof, right? And that's what that bam noise was, right? But it scared me because, you know, in my mind, I'm like being, had been being intimidated by these people that I'm trying to help, think I'm trying to help out, right? Because I seen the people fall, you know, the security guard, lame ass security guard, fall asleep at the desk. So, you know, anyway, um, but the, when the black limousine, when it drove past, I look at the license plate. It says on the license plate, 007 fun. 007 fun. Now, didn't it didn't sound like, you know, like a spy, almost like that movie, what was it, The Game or whatever with uh, Michael Douglas or whatnot. He didn't know he was in a game or if it was real or something. Anyway, it was like a rigged reality to make him feel like uh, he went through some adventure. Anyway, it's kind of like this kind of situation it started feeling like. Because I'm like, what do they do? Do they actually like, wonder if they get paid to like be in this club where they kind of like follow and harass like homeless people and like mess with their minds to like make them think, you know these thoughts that could play with their heads or what was that message but they definitely tried to scare me and they shot that bottle and 007 fun you know um, on the license plate I didn't understand that but you know 007 agents and all this stuff they were trying to talk to me tell me something you know but I left New Orleans before the Katrina hit and I had a feeling it was coming so I left but there just to let you know, there is other trade centers, okay? That's not the, those were not the only world trade centers in the whole world, okay? Uh, there's one, uh, I think there's another one in Houston. I believe Houston has one. Maybe Dallas, but I believe, I believe, maybe it's in Dallas. Somewhere in Texas, there's a, there's another world trade center. And there's other ones in the country. Okay, you just don't, they don't talk about them because the, the Twin Towers was the number one World Trade Center that most people were recognized. But there's, uh, there's more than one World Trade Center. So there's one in New Orleans. You don't believe me, check it out. You don't believe me, there's a club on top that goes in a circle. It's called the Club 360. I stood out there on the sidewalk and watched all the elite and rich go in there with their you know, gowns and their freaking clothes and everything, and they're all the rich and dressed up, and, and they go, they come in the door, and they're loud in the door and everything, 
and the, at the bottom. I've seen them all go in and out, so, you know. And uh, basically, when you're wearing the same clothes every day, like Batman does, then they recognize you every time. They know you, and especially if you're not hot, trying to hide it. You're making it in plain sight for them. Doing the opposite of what they do. Anyway, I know it sounds like a, you know, weird video, which mine are, when, when are my videos not strange uh, or uh, multi-path, okay? There's a lot going on in uh, my thought process, but I just wanted to share that. Those incidents, uh, there was more than one, and my notebook was taken, you know? They took my notebook. They knew I was, I, uh, they knew I was staying there. They knew where I was staying. They took my notebook for Homeland Security for evidence. They want to make sure they had it down, and they want to know what I was, uh, what I was up to, what I was writing, and uh, you know, I guess they didn't like my uh, research, me keeping tabs on them, and their how crappy their security was, and the way that they were intimidating me when I tried to do my duty. As a citizen, which is what George Bush, the president, told us to do, was what? Be vigilant and watchful, okay? Take a hand in being vigilant, okay? Help Homeland Security watch everybody. So being vigilant, what does that mean, to be vigilant and watchful? Doing what he said, okay? It was, now, uh, the funny thing is, as an afterthought, you know, this is before I was uh, really, I was, I, I was believed in Bush, okay, so back then I was a different person, totally different person. Yeah, I still believed in UFOs and conspiracy theories and different things like that, but I was still believed in the system. I still believed that, I was still in the matrix, I did not know. I wasn't that far into knowing that there was accepting the secret societies and that we were in the matrix and it was a rigged reality. I hadn't come that far. I really believed in the Republican Party and all that good shit, you know. Good morning, USA type shit, you know. Um, but anyway, so, you know, that, it was shocking to see the World Trade Center when it got hit uh, in 9-11... New York, because uh, I thought it was some other country that was an advanced country like, you know, America, but it had to be some foreign country, France or Brazil or somewhere else that wasn't our, because that didn't happen in our country, but obviously it did. And then, you know, the people that were in the building that died was a huge Freemasonic sacrifice, huge. Oh, boy. Oh boy, and in the you know what's irritating for the Islam uh, community is the big blame on these guys. You know they get the credit and they also get the bad blame from the rest of the international community as terrorists. You know, and uh, when it was a Bush rigged, you know Freemason rigged uh, setup that was planned all along. You know. Um, Just makes you wonder more, you know, like, what the hell, you know, what the hell, that's a bunch of garbled mess, you know, it's uh, chaos, it's confusion, it's Babylon, alright, and it's at Love Clark, love you guys, alright, love, love you guys.